gutted shells of buildings, flames raging out of control, and an atmosphere of apprehension still hover over the quieting Watts section of Los Angeles. Here for successive days and nights, mostly in the nights, the long, hot summer had erupted into violence. Powerless against snipers, looters, and arsonists operating in the dark, police and National Guardsmen had tried mostly to confine the disorder to the 42 square miles of this area. But as the outbreaks abated here, they started up in other communities, some nearby, some as far away as Chicago and Springfield, Massachusetts. Although Watts is a predominantly Negro community, there seem to be no elements of racial protest in the uprisings. Rather, they seem to be riots without cause, occurring as they did in the week the voting rights bill was signed. NAACP Executive Secretary Roy Wilkins said the civil rights cause does not condone or in any way approve rioting and looting as a weapon to secure citizenship rights. Other Negro leaders concurred in condemning the violence. Fire damage alone is estimated at more than $175 million. 30 were killed in the first six days, over 800 injured. Many small businessmen are completely ruined by the destruction of their shops and the loss of their goods by fire or by looting. Even after order is restored, the police and 15,000 National Guardsmen, virtually the state's entire force, remain on duty. Now the guards and police must see that food markets are reopened, electricity restored, refuse collected. All the steps that must be taken in a city where a tornado hits, whether it is stirred up by nature or by man.